Hey guys, so I got sent a Quinley Automated Print Manager uh, unit here that I'm really excited about. I reached out to Quinley because I saw this product online and I was really interested in it. So I reached out to them and had a chat with them and they were very kind enough to send me a unit for, for demo and for testing. Uh, unfortunately, the first unit they sent me, they sent to the beginning of this year. I still haven't received it from... Uh, from the post office so it went by Cana canadian post into south african post and unfortunately the south african post is probably i reckon one of the wor worst in the world terrible terrible service from south african post office and uh, i eventually reached out to them and said no it still hasn't arrived so they sent me another unit via dhl which arrived here in three days i'm oh, sorry not three days uh, 10 days so really a huge difference in in time there and Unfortunately, that is something that has plagued us in South Africa quite a bit. But this little kit that we've got here is quite an exciting little thing. It is a way to automate your print process. So when you're printing, have you ever had that case where you, you've done a couple of prints and then you're going to bed and you want to do one more print for the night. It's a two hour print and it completes successfully in two hours. And then your printer just sits idle. You get up the next morning, you take your print off, you start your next print of your project. You got to print 10 or whatever items. Uh, then you got to wait for you to wake up and actually come in here. With this system, you can automate the process using a Raspberry Pi form and then their setup over here that they've, they've devised. And I'm really keen to try this out. So I haven't put this unit together yet. I thought I would put it together with you guys. We'll put it together quickly and um, I'll edit it and I'll make sure that I don't waste too much of your time. But we'll just quickly put this thing together play around with it, and then in next week, I will show you the uh, Raspberry Pi 4 setup, what you need to install the software and all that, and then I will test it over a couple of weeks and then give you a result. I'm excited about this. I'm really hoping it helps. I do a lot of prints for my church, and um, I've got a, a cross that I print out for our church, and I can print maybe six a day with the current method. If I use this, I'm re reckoning I can probably double that because when I go to bed, I start a print and then the next morning I take it off and I carry on with the prints. So, and you've got to monitor it and you've got to be keep an eye on the print to make sure when it, right, when it finishes the print, you go and you take the print off and you start your next print. With this system, it is largely automated. So very excited to see how well this works and let's get started. So first thing you get is a bunch of 3D printed parts that they have printed and then inside this envelope this is actually where the secret lies of this product if i can get it this is where the secret lies in this this uh bold plate here this bold plate is specially manufactured by them they they've custom built this this is their design this is their layout and uh, they've engineered this to at a specific temperature to be able to release now, as far as I know, what happens after it gets to that temperature, the head will sweep over your printing and push the print off uh, using their, their, their eye design here, which I'm actually quite excited about checking out. So we're going to stick that on shortly. Okay. And then uh, we'll put the rest of this together and we'll see how it goes. So let's get started. Okay. I did not read that first. You need to preheat the bulk plate. So... I'm going to quickly preheat. I'm going to set up the preheating. I'm going to stop this video, preheat it, and then we'll get going. So I have preheated the bed and I've also put some gloves on because I don't want to get any oils transferred across and anything like this. I want this to be a nice clean job. So it says to make sure that there's no dust or dirt on the, where's my cloth, on the bolt plate here. So there's nothing here that is, that is going to be built up. And then also I'm going to use these alcohol wipes to clean across the surface here to make sure it's crystal clean now it says do not use these on the vapor bed at all it gives you several warnings so i'm assuming there's a reason behind this uh, so i'm just going to give this a nice good old clean here and then it says dispose of the alcohol wipes to make sure that you don't put it onto the vapor when you when you're cleaning this vapor they call it a vapor sheet when you're cleaning it you clean it with uh, warm water and uh, mild dishwashing soap or mild soap so i'm going to be very careful of doing that and make sure that i keep this thing clean only in that way no scrapers right so there we go that's now clean 
Right, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to take a little bit of this off, get the alignment right. A little more off. We want to put this on nice and straight. Right, it then says take a cloth and rub in a V direction across here as you pull this backing off. So I'm just going to pull a bit more off. And I'm going to start wiping in a V configuration like this. Getting it nice, making sure there's no air bubbles. And nice and clean. Good pressure on there. I'm just going to keep putting the paper out. Alright. Obviously, after you put this on, you're going to have to re-level the bed because your your leveling is going to be totally out now because it's a lot thinner than the glass sheet that I had on there before. Right, so I'm just going to keep pushing. nearly there and there we go let's come out all right so that is our vapor sheet on here and it seems to transfer the heat quite well because that is quite hot all right there we go okay I'm gonna now cool this whole machine down and see, I took the, the side thing off because we don't need it while we're doing the installation. I took the control panel off. All right, there we go. I'm going to turn the printer off now because I'm going to do the rest of it with it off. I'm going to unplug this, get this out the way because we don't need that at the moment and we don't need the printer right okay so now that that is on and right now i've got that on now we're going to get the tilt blade so now what how this works is it it tilts the printer up at a specific angle which helps it uh, wash them off so i've got all my screws and everything ready here i'm going to i've got this beautiful tray that i printed from diy electronics uh, i'll try to include the sdl below if you guys want it Actually, let me take these gloves off now Right, okay, if you got that out the way. So the first thing is I want to put one of these on either side. So you got the, the four big ones, big T-nuts. There we go. Okay, so that bites into the top track and this one into the bottom track. Let's put our T-nut on. And another screw here. So I'm going to put both of these on first, not tighten them up because we want to still do some adjustments. That's that one on that side and this on the outside of this one. Right. So far, nice, clean design, uh, elegant and works well. Let's put these on. Right, now in the instructions it tells you that each of these brackets must be 10 millimeters from the front. So I'm going to, sorry, 10 centimeters, not 10 millimeters. Now I'm going to use a vernier. I'm going to set this to millimeters and I'm going to set it to 10 centimeters, exactly. All right, there we go. So we've got 10 centimeters on there. We use the depth gauge. And I'm going to use that to get my alignment right. Let's tighten it up a little bit so we don't move around. And I'll check. Okay. And there we go. I've got it exactly 10 centimeters on that side. And then this one. Let's tighten 
enough. Exactly 10 centimeters on that side. And then we have our two brackets like this. Okay, so that's nicely set up and done. Next step. Okay guys, I've got a bit of a confession to make. I stopped recording and I then put this thing together myself and I've just taken it all apart again because I was struggling with a couple of the concepts in the, in the instructions. A little bit unclear, so um, I decided to put everything together, make sure everything works, and I found a couple of issues along the way that I'll highlight to you guys. Okay. So now remember, I'm using a V2 version of the Ender 3. Right, so let's continue now um, where, where we left off. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to put on these covers. These covers go on the front here to prevent uh, the machine from sliding, well, the parts from sliding into the works of the machine. So what I'm going to do quickly is I'm going to put this on its side here. I wonder if you can see that. And I'm going to undo this here. So you undo the bottom one. And I'm going to take it out. Drop on the floor. This then slots in quite easily into the, I think it's it's well designed. You know, the, the prints are nicely done. And um, I just wonder if there's replacement parts if something goes wrong. So there we go. Now I'll put that one on there. Now, when I came to this side doing the same thing, let me just put that down. Right, when I came to this side doing the same thing, um, I first tried to put this on here and it said to me that, well, this instruction said that we need to screw it in here. This part here was not tapped. So this front part, I don't know if you can see it. This part here was not tapped. So I need to tap that part first before um, I could go any further. So now I have tapped that. And if we drop that in there like that, then everything fits again. So I'm just going to take out those. And the first time I tapped it, I didn't tap it deep enough. So I had to tap it a second time. But yeah, just use a tapping tool and that sorts out that issue. Okay, so that, that was one of the problems I found. Now, I'm going to put the machine over again. I should have cleaned up this workspace a little bit more. All right, so let's tilt that over like that. Right, now uh, we are going to start putting these parts on. So, when I first tried this, I slotted it in the way the instructions said. Uh, what the heck am I doing? Like that, okay. But now, I could not get this to align. This would not align into the rail. And it said they to butt it up against the rubber that was under the foot here. But what I found out is that if you look at the end of three, that's a lot thinner. This is a lot thicker. So obviously they made space for the fan and stuff like that. So this rubber is a lot thicker. So I just peeled them off and that worked. So now what we can do is we can take the two big ones. Where are the big ones? We can take two of our T-nuts, pop them in there, get this to align properly, get two screws, trusty little tray and then you clip that in from the bottom and then you just get it to align and butt up directly across there then i'm just going to line up my t-nut screw the first one in and you know once you figure out these little funny problems things become a lot easier and uh yeah there were there were one or two little issues that i had with the way the original instructions told me to do things. So I've done them slightly different. I don't think that's going to detract from the way this works. Nope, that did not go through. So I don't think this will detract the way from it, the way it works. All right. Here we go. Screw that in and it's nice and solid. All right. And it's nicely butted up against there. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. So flip the whole machine over carefully. Get this to where I can see what's going on. And then we put this one in, bottom section first. Oh, no. Put your T's in first. It's easy to do this standing up, but then I'll be out of frame and I don't want to do that. So right, let's get this 
in there, and I'm just going to put a screw in here. it up straight against there. All right. Let's tighten this up. I love the way T-nuts work. I think it's a very clever design and it's quite amazing how they, they flop into the right orientation as you're tightening, tightening and then you've got a perfect nice tight butt. Right, so there we go. Now that's in. Let's bring it up, and now we've got our. I don't want to crush that cable. We've got a nice uh, angle that we want here. So then there's just two more parts. These parts here are they go on the sides to prevent the parts from falling into the mechanics again. So another clever design, well thought out, and they just clip in like that. And this one here is a little bit more difficult because you've got to go around the switch. I struggled with this last time. You've got to move the wire right out the way. Try to get it in there. There we go. Okay, that's one thing I did notice is that slides down on power. So that we had to remove the two rubbers from the side there. And um, then the next thing was... They provide mounts here uh, for the version 1 of the Ender 3, but not for the version 2. So I played around with this a little bit, and I found that if you just pop these the, the, in the top rail, uh, so we put the two T-nuts in the top rail, I need a different Allen key, then that'll work. Actually kind of neat and kind of nice. Right, there we go. So that works kind of nice there. We plug our cable back in here. I do like the way the end of 2, version 2, is designed with this the screen. The only thing I would say is I wish it was a touch screen. Uh, I'm not happy that it's not a touch screen. But there we go. We are now done. This thing is in and it is ready to go. So now... I'm going to now go on to the next step. I hope I didn't do that too fast. Uh, let me know in the comments below if I did go too fast. Just it does cover everything. But yeah, maybe I moved a little bit too fast. But yes, the instructions are a little bit hard to read, uh, especially in the black and white. I found it a little bit difficult. Maybe if it was printed in color um, and it would be a little bit easier to, to read then. But other than that, not too difficult to put together and figure out for yourself. Uh, just a little bit of playing around that I needed to do. So I'm going to leave this video at that. The next step I'm going to do is load the Raspberry Pi 4, which we'll do together next week. Um, I will put that up. And um, after that, we'll I'll run it for a week or two, and I'll let you know what the results are of this thing. I'm excited about this. It makes it easier to print so that you don't have to keep replacing the part. It will just fall over. I'd suggest you put a bin below here or something like that. So I'm going to experiment with a couple of things on that. And then I will share my results with you. But first, I just wanted to get the assembly done. It looks nice. I think the spool... Okay, I've got, I've got a slightly different design. My extruders up top here. I've taken it off the rail. I did not like it then. They do provide a standoff that will then mount your... Um, your spool holder on the side here so that it feeds in nicer from the side which i thought is a nice idea but i still love my setup here this setup works really well for me so guys that's it for this video uh, i hope it was informative i hope it got you excited about this product um, i'm excited about this product go and check out Quinley's website i'll put a link in the description below don't forget to subscribe please subscribe to the channel um, I apologize for not posting all that often, but subscribe. I'm going to start pushing that back up again. Subscribe and like this video if you like it. If you didn't like it, give me a comment below why and let me know what else you think. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.